Hey, it's Casey here with CL Creative where I'm teaching you web design and web flow one video at a time. And today we're going to talk about how to build a pop-up in Webflow. We're not going to use JavaScript. We're simply going to use Webflow's native interactions. We're going to look at the HTML structure and how you might need to, to structure that pop-up in order for it to work correctly, as well as the interactions that you need to set up in order for your pop-up to work every single time. So let's jump into the computer and check things out. All right, well, here we are in the computer. And so the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to show you the HTML structure. And then we're going to talk about the CSS. And then we're going to get into the interactions that we need. So three steps here as we check out this particular video. So the first thing I want to show you here is our modal pop-up. And I want to show you the structure that is built around this particular modal pop-up. So the first thing that we need is we need some sort of button on the page. You can use a button, you can use a div block, um, however you want to set this up. In this instance, I've just simply put a div block on the page, styled it, put a text block inside of it, and put more information because our modal pop-up is going to give us more information. Uh, one of the, the things that if you're going to use a div block like I have used here, what you want to make sure to do is go down here to the cursor, and turn the pointer event on. Don't leave it at auto because it's not gonna it's not gonna recognize it as something that it needs to put a cursor on. And so we want to make sure that we turn on this pointer. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to look at this structure right here. And so we have our modal pop-up. And let me go ahead, I have this on display none. So let me go ahead and turn this on. Now this is set up in a number of different ways. First we have our modal pop-up, which is the main wrapper. All right, you can notice this blue line that goes all the way around. And the way that we are achieving that is we have set modal pop-up. We've set this to display flex. Uh, it's going to have an alignment of center. Uh, it's going to be justified center. There's a little bit of spacing on the outside of it as well. And we've set this to position fixed, full. And the z-index is about as high as you can get. I mean, you can create a z-index however high you want, but 9,999. We want to make sure that this modal stays on top of the entire screen. As well as we are putting a little bit of color into the background. In this case, we're just darkening the background. And so it's set to black. And then pull this down to whatever, whatever you like. You know, somewhere around you know, 45 or 50% is good. You can kind of see the background still, but you know, you know, as a user that this is, this is what you're, I'm supposed to be looking at. The next thing we need our modal cover, and this is set to, this is just a div set to position absolute full. So this is actually filling up this entire box right here. The next thing we have is our modal wrapper. And so this is the actual place where our content is going to go. And we have this right here. You know, this particular one is set to grid to get some of the styling in here. But, but you can really style this however you want. I'm going to focus on the necessary classes that we need in order to make this pop-up work. How you style it is going to be absolutely up to you. In this case, I just have an image and some text and a button here. You could have all kinds of stuff in here. But this modal wrapper, it's what's housing all of our content. And so this is set to a width of 100%, and it is set to a max width of 60 rim. So it's going to take up 100%, but the max width is only going to be 60 rim. It's not going to get any larger than that, right? And that's important because we'd want this thing to fill up the entire screen. We actually want it to look like a pop-up right in the middle of our screen. And this one right here has a z-index of 999. And of course, in order to set the z-index, we have set this to position relative. Um, and then, you know, just some other styles, right? We've got our image, we've got our content, all of that. We can close that. Then the next thing that is important is we need something to close this wrapper, some sort of button 
that shows that this is how you actually close the pop-up. You can put this button way up here in the top right corner. You can put it on the pop-up itself. You can put it out here. I mean, how you're going to style that is totally up to you, but we need some sort of button here. And so that's all I've done. We've just placed a button here. Uh, and one of the things that I did here, similarly to the other, is if we come over, you notice that I put a pointer event on this as well. So that way, whenever you hover over it, it's going to look like you can actually click on it to provide a good user experience for people. Okay, so that's pretty much our setup here for our pop-up. This is your uh, HTML structure and the necessary CSS that you need in order to make this work. So let me go ahead and hide our modal pop-up. And the next thing we need to do is we need to build our interactions. And so, of course, we want our modal pop-up to actually pop up. And we're going to utilize this button right here. And so the idea is that you want to know a little bit more about some analytics. You click on the more information. And instead of taking you to another page, it's going to take you to a quick pop-up there on the page. So we're going to click on our interactions. I already have one built here, but we will, re we will rebuild it together. All right. So let me just go ahead and delete these so we can go ahead and build this together. So this is our trigger. This is what we have triggered the interaction with, which is our button. And we've done that by clicking on the button and then creating our actual interaction here. So we, we click on this button. We're going to click Start a Timed Animation. And then we're going to create that animation. And that's where we are at now. So let's create our animation. The first thing that we need to do is we need to set the initial state for our pop-up. And so the initial state for our pop-up, it's going to be, it's going to be hidden. Uh, and then there's going to be some opacity because we want it to fade in nicely. And so the opacity is going to be at zero. Now, if you notice, it took away this button because it's thinking that I want to create this actually on the button. So what we have to do at this point is we need to make sure that we change the target. In order to change the target, all we're going to do is right click, click change target, and then we're going to go over here to our navigator and we're going to click on modal pop-up. And you notice that modal pop-up comes up here as well as it appears down here in our classes showing us that we have indeed changed our target. The next thing we want to do is you actually want to click off of. You notice that modal pop-up is highlighted. I want to click on that again and change the target. I want to click off of that to modal cover or somewhere else. I'm going to come back, right click, change target, and go back here and click on modal pop-up. So we want to make sure that we set that as our initial state. Now, the next thing we want to do is we have our initial state is setting this at opacity of zero and it's hidden. We're going to click in. We need to make sure that our pop-up shows. So we're going to do hide show first and we're going to set that back to flex, right? And this indeed is on our modal pop-up. The next thing that we want to do is click again, and we want to change the opacity. All right, we because we're clicked on this and we're clicking these buttons, or we're clicking to to add. Uh, this is why it is already on here. So that's just a, a quick tip. Um, don't you know? In the beginning, I could have not stayed, you know, selecting this button over here and made these first two. So I wouldn't have had to change my target. I could have just went over here and clicked on modal pop-up and then made all four of these it probably would have been the better way to do that so don't make the same mistake that i just made all right so now we need to change our opacity what we want to do is come down here and all we we want to change our opacity to 100 so you just basically have to click on this and slide it to the right a little bit you just want to make sure that opacity is highlighted it'll tell you here like it did before that we haven't actually selected anything now at this point you can determine how how long do you want this to take so what's our duration going to be and in this case 0.5 you know might be nice that's half a second so let's just do that at a quarter of a second it's going to fade in but it's not going to take forever 
Now, in this instance, what we are doing in our interaction is we actually have these two are grouped together. You notice that they're, they're close together. These two are happening one after the other. So the opacity, the start, is going to happen after the previous action. And that's going to give us that nice fade-in effect. So we want to create hide show first. Then we want to create our opacity in our timeline here of the animations. And we want to make sure after previous, we're going to change, we're going to determine whatever the duration is. You can play around with the easing and things like that. I'm just going to leave it, leave it at linear so it just fades right in. All right, we're going to save that and our pop-up is going to disappear because it's going to go back to its initial state. All right, so now we have created our new timed animation and it is connected to this button. The next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we can close our pop-up. So let me click out of this and let me go ahead and open this pop-up back up so we can get access to some of these controls. We could do this without the pop-up up, but it might just be easier for our video so that we can actually see, you know, what we're doing. So we're going to open the pop-up and what we want to do is we want to click on modal cover. So we need to create an interaction here on modal cover. So let me just let me just get rid of the one that I already have. How you do that is plus. You're going to click mouse click tap. We're going to select on first click, start an animation. And I already have one set up. So let me just click that and click into it. I'll delete these so you can see what we are actually doing. All right. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to click on the cover and we want that to close the modal. So all we need to do really is reverse what we did. Now we want to begin to fade out first. So we want to fade down to zero and we want to do this in 0.25 seconds. And then the next thing that we want to do is I only click off of this. Sometimes, you know, whenever you're working with this, it gets a little bit confused. So we're to click back in our modal cover. We're going to click right there. And we're just going to go ahead and select the class. or I'm excuse, excuse me that is not right don't get confused we want to close the pop-up not the cover so we want to change the target and go back over here to the modal pop-up all right you got to make sure that you're selecting the right thing sometimes there's a lot of stuff on the canvas so we got to make sure that we're selecting the right things whenever we're doing this so that we're closing the right thing all right we got that straightened out now the next thing that we want to do this is the cover. So if we click on that cover, then this pop-up will close. The next thing we need to do is we need to create the interaction for our button. And I can just X out of that. This is one here is really, really easy. You click on modal close, which is what we're going to click on here. Plus, mouse click tap on first click, start an animation. And we've already set one up. So all we need to do is actually just click on that and that's it. We can close that down. We can go back over here and we can close our pop-up. Now we don't have to close the pop-up whenever we run this, you know, it's going to close it anyways because we set the initial state to close, but it makes it really difficult for you to actually, you know, style anything on the canvas, you can't really get to anything because this pop-up here is in the way. So you're just going to click on modal pop-up and display none. Now we have access to our canvas. And if we need to add or change anything in the pop-up, we just go back over here and click on display flex. So now we can test and see if this works. Click on more information. Our pop-up comes up. It fades in nicely. If we click on the background, our pop-up 
disappears, it fades out and disappears. We're going to click on more information again to, to reset our pop-up or bring our pop-up back. We're going to test out our button. And again, that works. And more information. All right, so that's how you set up a pop-up inside of Webflow using Webflow's native interactions. No coding necessary. We can do this completely inside of Webflow using the interactions there. If you got some value out of this video, would you smash that like button? Would you comment down below? Tell me you know, how much time this has saved you. Tell me something. You interacting with this video, you liking it, you sharing it with other people is going to help get this out in front of more people so that they can build pop-ups inside of Webflow as well. And if you want more content like this, I'm putting out content on a regular basis, subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you on the next video.